Today we're going to be building a Raspberry Pi based NAS, or Network Attached Storage Device, using all new parts for as little as possible. If you don't know what a NAS is, it's essentially a small computer that's hooked up to a storage drive and acts as a file server on your network, allowing you to access your files from any device. This is not the first one I've built, I've actually built a few of these in the past, but they've all turned out to be quite costly. So in this build, the primary focus is going to be on building a fully functional NAS for as little as possible. To do this, we're obviously going to have to cut some corners and make some sacrifices, so I expect it to be slow, and it probably won't have a huge storage capacity, but it will be perfect as a first NAS build for someone who doesn't want to spend a lot of money, or if you're wanting to build one just to learn how they work and how to set them up. To start, we're going to need a really cheap computer, and they don't come cheaper than a Raspberry Pi Zero, the original being just $5. The trouble with the original is that it's now quite underpowered, and it doesn't have any onboard networking abilities. So we need to add a USB Wi-Fi or Ethernet adapter, which adds to the cost. So I'm rather going to splash out on the $15 Pi Zero 2W. This is the second version of the Pi Zero, which has an upgraded 64-bit CPU that matches the launch version of the Pi 3, and the W means that it's got built-in Wi-Fi. So we can use this as our network interface, and then we don't need any additional adapters or dongles. For storage, an SSD is the obvious, reliable answer, but the cheapest one I could find from a reputable brand was around $35, which was more than double the price of the Pi Zero 2W. It was also a 2.5 inch SATA drive, which would then require a USB adapter, and since the Pi Zero's USB port is a micro USB port, we'd need another adapter to convert it from USB A to micro USB so we'd be in for close to $50 in total for storage. Instead I found one of these 128GB SanDisk Ultra dual drives. These were made as flash drives for Android phones, so it's already got a micro USB port to plug directly into the Pi without any additional adapters. The best part is that this was only $12, and you can even get a 16GB one for $7, or a 32GB one for $8 if you'd like to go a little bit cheaper. The last component I need to buy is the micro SD card to load the operating system onto. For this I used the 32GB SanDisk Ultra card, which was around $6. So I was all in on the parts for $33, leaving a couple of dollars extra for a fan and heatsink. You don't need a fan if you're not using the Pi in an enclosure, but I want to design a 3D printable enclosure for it so it looks the part when it's done. So I'm using this 30mm 5V fan. To design the enclosure I used Fusion 360. I designed it to house the Pi Zero with the ports kept internal, so that the storage drive would be within the NAS. So I made a slot along the side that fed to the back for the power cable to pass through. I made the enclosure as a two-part design that looks like a two-bay NAS, with the bay sliding out on a carrier tray for the internal components. The Pi, storage and fan will all be mounted onto this tray, so that there's no need to worry about disconnecting cables or jumpers when sliding it out. I 3D printed the two parts in black PLA on my Creality Ender 3. It took around 19 hours to print both and used just less than a dollar's worth of filament. I removed the supports and then the enclosure was ready to mount the NAS components into. I made two versions of the enclosure, one which you can screw the Pi directly onto and then this version which requires some M2.5 brass inserts. The brass inserts make it a bit more durable and it's then easier to install or remove the power multiple times without stripping the threads. We can then mount the power into the brass standoffs with some M2.5 by 6mm button head screws. Now let's mount the fan. I'm using the fan to pull air into the case, and I'm going to be mounting it using some M2.5 by 12mm button head screws and nuts on the back. I'm plugging the fan into the 3.3V and ground pins on the Pi, so that it runs a bit quieter than at 5V. Next let's install the drive. The housing on the drive that protects the USB ports gets in the way of the adjacent power cable, so I'm going to remove it by snapping off the grey slider cover. 
We can then plug it into the PaaS micro USB port. Next let's add our power cable alongside it. Lastly we can add our micro SD card, which are flashed with Raspberry Pi OS Lite using Raspberry Pi Imager. There are a few things we need to do in the settings tab before flashing the image. We're going to be using this as a headless part, meaning we want to access it from another computer on our network to set it up, rather than having to plug it into a monitor, keyboard and mouse. So we need to give it a name to identify it on our network. I'm going to call it Mini NAS. We also need to enable SSH so that we can access it remotely. I'll leave the username as Pi, but change the password. Then add the Wi-Fi network name and password, and set the region. Make sure that you get all these correct, or your Pi won't connect to your network and you won't be able to access it, so you'll need to do this step again. We can then put our microSD card into the Pi, and that's the hardware complete. So let's slide the tray into the housing and get it powered up. Once the Pi is running, leave it for about 5 minutes to allow it time to run through the first boot and connect to your Wi-Fi network. We then need to find the IP address of the Pi. We can do this through the network's DHCP table, or using a utility like Angry IP Scanner. We'll be looking for a recently added device called Mini NAS. With the IP address we can then SSH into the Pi to continue setting it up. I'm going to use the terminal on a second Pi for this. You can also use a utility like Putty to do it from a Windows PC. We'll need to enter the username and password that was set up when we are flashing the microSD card, and we then have access to the Pi. Next let's run a quick update. Then we can enter this command to download and run the OpenMediaVault install script. This will install and set up everything needed to run OpenMediaVault on the Pi. When it finishes, it'll recommend restarting the part. Do not do this, or you'll have wasted half an hour of your life like I did, because the OMV setup disables the Wi-Fi connection by default. So you'll either need to start again by reflashing the OS image, or find a way to add an Ethernet adapter to the Pi to be able to access it again. I reflashed the card and landed up back here a while later. From here you can go into the OMV workbench through a browser by going to the Pi's IP address. You'll be prompted for a login, which is admin and open media vault. You can then go to network and interfaces and then recreate your Wi-Fi network connection. You'll also need to click on the tick in the yellow box to apply the changes for them to take effect. I also did this through OMV first aid in the terminal, although I'm fairly certain you don't need to do both, but I didn't want to take a chance and then have to start again for the third time. Once we've restarted, we can move on to setting up OMV. I'm going to go over this quite briefly here, but I'll leave a link to a good guide in the video description if you'd like to follow along. We essentially need to wipe and mount our storage drive, which is a 128GB SAN disk drive. Then create a shared folder on it called Mini NAS. And then enable a sharing service to access it through Windows. You can also create user accounts with different access rights and set up a dashboard to monitor your Mini NAS through the web interface. With that all set up and running, let's try it out and see how good it is, or perhaps rather how bad it is. We first need to add our shared folder as a network location. And once we have access to it, we can then try copying some files across to it. Let's start by copying a 600 meg video file and see what speeds we get. So it seems to stabilize at an average of around 4.5 megabytes per second. 
This is a bit less than I was expecting, but honestly isn't terrible. It's obviously not great for large files like this, but if you want an easy network location to store documents and small files, then it's quite usable. I need to do some experimenting with the speed to see where the bottleneck is, as I expected it to be a bit closer to 10 to 15 megabytes per second, as the Wi-Fi and USB speeds on the Pi Zero 2 should manage significantly more than the 4.5 megabytes per second I'm currently getting. But in any case, we have a perfectly functioning NAS that costs $35 to build, and we can easily add more storage or more reliable storage in the future if we'd like to. Another interesting aspect of this NAS is that it runs at just over 1 watt, so it'll run for an entire year and only consume a few cents to a dollar's worth of electricity. Let me know what you think of my budget NAS in the comment section below, and let me know what you think the first upgrade should be. I'll leave links to the parts and to get the enclosure 3D printing files in the video description. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.